All right, today in class, we are going to build off your knowledge of a monohybrid cross, and we are going to work on what is called a dihybrid cross. And just from guessing from the name, mono means one, so di means two, okay? So your objective for today is that you will be able to produce, uh, predict outcomes of a dihybrid cross after doing them and predict basically what are the percentages of possibilities of what offspring could be when they are made between um, organisms when you consider two genes at a time and two traits for um, at a time. So the do now is still a monohybrid cross. So I'm going to ask you to grab a scrap sheet of paper or a notebook. And the gene we're going to work with is tongue twisting. So it's whether or not you can flip your tongue this way or that way that's considered tongue twisting. For example, I can do it. Right. Some people can, some people can't. So tongue twisting, being able to do it is a dominant trait. And then not being able to do it is a recessive trait. OK, so if you look at the do now, the mom has the capital T, lowercase t, and so she can twist her tongue. The dad is lowercase t, lowercase t. He's homozygous recessive, so he cannot twist his tongue. I'm going to ask that you perform a monohybrid cross to determine how likely it is that their kid will not be able to twist their tongue. And you will put the answer down below in the question. Um, yeah, also you can always pause when you need to. So a dihybrid cross is a genetic cross involving two traits at a time. So when we did monohybrid crosses like we did in the do now, that's only one trait at a time. There's two alleles for every one trait. In this case, we're going to be doing two traits at a time, which means there is four alleles we have to take care of at a time. It's going to get complicated, but there is always a surefire way to do it. So there is something called the law of independent assortment. And that basically means that when alleles are separating, um, they separate independently of each other. So they're not dependent on each other of where they go when they're being pulled apart during anaphase. They just are organized randomly in metaphase as their excess, and then they get pulled apart randomly during anaphase. And so it's just random assortment. It's just by random chance which gamete has which allele in it. And uh, it's kind of cool because that means that we get random new genetic combinations, okay? So that means that traits are transmitted to offspring independently of one another. One trait does not depend on another, unless the problem specifically tells you that they're linked together. But the ones that we're going to be working with are generally not linked, so they're independent. They're standalone by themselves. They don't care about what anybody else is doing. They're just splitting however they split randomly. So the example would be that hair color has no influence on eye color or height or any traits. It just so happens that you get a random combination of whatever you got from your parents. So you heard of the FOIL technique before in math. And in math, it means um, that you're going to be multiplying the first two parts of um, two sections or the outside or the inner or the last. And when we work with dihybrid crosses, we are also going to be doing something similar. And so when you look at a set of two or a dihybrid genotype, basically, you're looking at two alleles for two genes. So there's two different kinds of letters, right? There's B's and then there's E's. So that tells us that we're working with two kinds of genes. Each gene has two kinds of alleles. In this case, we have the capital B, the dominant B, and the lowercase b, the recessive B. We also have the dominant E and the recessive E, the capital and the lowercase. So when we do FOIL, we're going to be looking at the first B and the first E. So that would be capital B and lowercase b, E. Uh, sorry, capital B and capital E. First B and first E, first. Outer would be what's on the outside of this genotype. So it would be the capital B and the lowercase e because they're on the outside of this genotype. Inner would be the two that are touching each other in the center of the genotype, and that would be the lowercase b and the capital E. And last would be the last b and the last e. And the combination would be the lowercase b and the lowercase e. And so these are the four kinds of random gametes that this genotype as a parent can produce. So whether they're producing sperm or egg, Basically, their sperm can contain this, or this, or this, or this. So we're going to practice using FOIL. And I'm going to ask you to do your first outside, inside, and last to get me um, the possible gametes that come out of these individual um, organisms that are producing either sperm or egg. So the steps to solve a dihybrid cross are as follows. You're going to determine the genotypes of both parents from the problem or if they give it to you. 
you're going to list all possible gametes of each parent using FOIL, which was this method. You're going to set up a Punnett square with gametes from both parents. So you have to have enough spaces across the top and across the side for the parents' types of gametes. So some parents will produce four different kinds of gametes. Some parents will only produce two kinds of gametes. Some parents will only produce one kind of gamete. It just depends on what their genotype is. And you'll see what I mean in a second. So you will fill your Punnett square with the potential offspring by combining the gametes together two across and two horizontally, and they, they will match up. And then inside the box, you'll write out four letters at a time instead of just two letters at a time. And then you'll find out the genotypic ratios and the phenotypic ratios at the end, like we did for the monohypercrosses, so that you can answer questions that the questions are going to be asking you on the test and on the star test and in any problems that we do. So the example we're going to do together is the cross between the mom and the dad. And it's going to be capital R, capital R, capital Y, lowercase y, lowercase r, lowercase r, and capital Y, lowercase y as the cross of the two parents. So I'm going to do that together with you um, working by hand. So as you can see, I have the cross written out. The mom is big R, big R, big Y, little y, and the dad is little r, little r, big Y, little y. Okay, and basically what this is talking about is this is talking about P's. So the capital R is a round P. The lowercase r is a wrinkled P, right? The capital means that it's dominant and the lowercase means that it's recessive. Capital Y is yellow and lowercase y is green. So yellow is dominant because it's the capital and green is recessive because it's the lowercase y, okay? So these are the gametes that we need, sorry, these are the parental genotypes that we have to pull gametes from. So we're gonna do mom first. So we're gonna do FOIL. So FOIL means we're gonna pull the first R and the first Y, which means we have a capital R and a capital Y. We're gonna do outside, which means we're doing the outside R and the outside Y. So that means we're having a capital R, lowercase y. Now we'll do inner which is the inside R and the inside Y, which is capital R, capital Y. And then we're gonna do the last, which is going to be the capital R and lowercase Y. If you notice here, there's capital R, capital Y, but that's repeated here. Capital R, lowercase Y, repeated here. So do we really have four different kinds of gametes? No. Here, we have them repeated, so therefore we only have two kinds of gametes, which will just be this one and this one. It's kind of easier if we do it this way. So for the dad, we're going to pull from the little r, little r, big y, little y. So we're going to do our first, first r, first y. So we should have little r, big y. Okay. Outside, little r, little y. Inside little r, big y. And last, which would be little r, little y. Hmm, seems similar to what we just did, right? If you look here, there's a little r, big y, but over here, there's also a little r, big y. Over here, there's a little r, little y, there's also a little r, little y here. So if it's just duplicated, we'll just do one set at a time. So in the end, when we're supposed to be doing a four by four and having 16, in this case, we end up only having to actually do a two by two, which is kind of nice because the proportions will be kept even whether we do a two by two or a four by four. But the actual resulting genotypes are still going to have two traits in them. So we're going to put the moms at the top. And like I said, we're only going to be using this little box but usually we would be drawing the four by four for 16 boxes, so this big set. So we're gonna put the moms here. So we're gonna put R, Y, big R, big Y, and then we'll put her big Y, R, little Y. And we'll put the dad's little R, big Y, and then we'll put his little R, little Y. And so the way this is gonna work is I'm gonna be pulling the big R, big Y, and the little R, big Y, and this is going to end up being big R, little r, big Y, big Y. And then we'll pull this one over here and this one down and we should have big R, little r, big Y, little y. Over here, we're gonna pull this down and this over. So we're gonna have big R, little r, big Y, little y. And then lastly here, we're gonna have this one and this one and we're gonna have big R, little r, 
little y, little y. Okay, so now let's just set our genotypes. So our genotypes are, as we see here, big R, little r, big Y, big Y. That's the one over here. What about this one? This one is big R, little r, big Y, little y. And that's repeated over here. So we're not going to rewrite it, but we're going to take note of that later when we do our ratios and our percents. And the last genotype we have is big R, little r, little y, little y. And so we want to talk about our um, ratios now. So out of here, we have one out of four for big R, little r, big y, little y. We noted earlier that there's two of them. So there's two out of four. And that big R, little r, little y, little y, there's only one out of four. So this means that we have a 25% chance of the offspring having this genotype. We have a 50% chance of the offspring having this genotype. And we have a 25% chance of the offspring having this genotype. Okay, now we're gonna go down here and see what kind of combinations we have. So this one has a big R and this one has a big Y, which means that it is both round and yellow. Okay, this one has a big R and a big Y too. This one is both round and yellow as well. So that means one, two, three are round and yellow. So round and yellow is going to be three out of four, which is 75% of the offspring, or not of the offspring, but when an offspring is made, there's a 75% chance that it will be round and yellow. Over here, we have round because it's a capital R. And since we have a homozygous recessive for the yellow side, it's actually green colored this time. So it's gonna be round and green. And so it's gonna be one out of four, and that would be 25% chance. That means that out of all the offspring coming out of the cross that we just did up here between these two, there's actually 0% chance that any offspring will be wrinkled in yellow or wrinkled in green. So that'd be 0% and 0%, okay? So that's kind of interesting to think about that you could cross these and sometimes you expect random things to come out of them because this parent is round and yellow and then this parent is wrinkled and yellow that maybe you would have some that are wrinkled, but none of the babies actually end up being wrinkled. Okay, so now we are going to go ahead and um, do the next problem. And that one is going to be example two, which is a round yellow seed is crossed with a wrinkled green seed. Okay, so we're gonna be doing capital R, lowercase r, capital Y, lowercase y. Right, this is round and yellow and this one is wrinkled and green because it's recessive for the smooth or round sorry it's recessive for round so it's wrinkled and it's recessive for yellow so it's green so let me show this setup now so again i have the information where it's round yellow seed is crossed with a wrinkled green seed and these are the parents genotypes now I wanna write out the possible gametes that each of them are going to produce. So we know that the capital R, lowercase r, capital Y, lowercase y parent can produce. So we'll pull the first R and the first Y. And we're going to say that they produce possible gametes that have capital R, capital Y. Outside, capital R and lowercase y. Inside, lowercase r, capital Y. And last R, last Y, which would be lowercase r, lowercase y. Okay, so these are the gametes that this parent can produce. Over here, if we do FOIL, we get first, outside, inside, and last. And if you notice, they're all literally the same. So we're just going to be using one. Okay, that means we have four across here and we only have one across here. So we're actually only going to need one single row out of the 16 box Punnett square, which is kind of nice, but I drew it out just in case we would need it. So one of the parents is able to produce these gametes. And if you notice, basically, if, you're a he if your parent is heterozygous for both, they will produce all four types of gametes. And if they're not headers, I guess for both, they produce a lot less than four. So it can be one, it can be two, it can be three, it can be, the, um, it just can't be four because only the headers, I guess for both produces four. And so the other parent can only give one type of gamete. So instead of doing the same thing four times down, we're just gonna do it once because the ratio stays the same, okay? So if we're pulling these two together, 
we're going to get capital R from here, lowercase r from here, capital Y from here, lowercase y from here. Okay, over here we're going to get the capital R from here, lowercase r from here, and then lowercase y from here and here. We pull this one down in with here, we have lowercase r, lowercase r, but then we have a capital Y from here and a lowercase y from here. And then lastly, when we pull this one with this one, it's going to be lowercase all around. Okay, so our possible genotypes, we're going to list all of our genotypes. And we're going to try to see how many there are. So capital R, lowercase r, capital Y, lowercase y. And I only see one. So that's 25%. So capital R, lowercase r, lowercase y, lowercase y. That's also one out of four. So that's also 25%. Lowercase r, lowercase r, capital Y, lowercase y. That's also one out of four, which is, again, 25%. And then lastly, lowercase r, lowercase r, lowercase y, lowercase y, which is one out of four, which is lastly 25%. And again, these total up to be 100%. So what phenotypes do we have? Instead of listing all the possible phenotypes initially, I figure we would just list the ones that we have here. So capital R here, capital Y, means that it's going to be round and yellow. Do we have any others that have a capital R, capital Y? We have some that have one or the other, but we don't have any that have both. So that would be one out of four, which is 25%. Here we have capital R, but no capital Y, which means that this one is round and green. Do we have any others that are round and green? Well, I don't see any. So we have 25% that would be round and green. Here we have recessive for the round, so it would be wrinkled but it has a capital Y, which means it's going to be yellow. And we don't have any others that are like that. So that's one out of four, which is 25% again. And then lastly, we have this one that's lowercase r, lowercase y, r, and lowercase y and lowercase y, which means that it is both wrinkled and green. And that's the only one of its kind, so it's 25%. So basically when these two plants are crossed, any offspring that they have, are a 25% chance of being round and yellow, a 25% chance of being round and green, 25% chance of being wrinkled in yellow, or a 25% chance of being wrinkled in green. So basically, there's an even chance that their um, offspring will be any of the possible combinations of phenotypes for this plant. And so that's kind of cool to think about when you're going around and answering your questions. Um, so the last thing I'm gonna have you do after going through this is that you are going to be answering questions on your own now. So you're going to be doing example three on your own. So you're going to go ahead and make sure that you do FOIL first for each of the parental genotypes on a scrap piece of paper. And then you're going to spread the parents, the moms across here and the dads across here. We'll usually say the first one is the mom, the second one is the dad. And then you're going to fill out your table by pulling the mom's ones down and the dad's ones over and matching up. So each box should have four letters in it at a time, two R's and two Y's, depending on whatever's at the top. And then you'll write out your genotype possible ones and your phenotype possible ones. And if you use all 16, you have to divide it by 16. If you use eight, then you have to use eight. If you use four, then you have to divide by four. Okay, so then you're going to find your percentages and then I will ask the questions that you will be answering in the Google form below.